I still have thrills after, after the last pressure. Yes, uh, I'm a sex coach. And uh, today I would like to talk about the most omitted subject on this planet, good sex. You may think that sex is everywhere, and you're probably right. Sex is all around. But if you consider quality of it, you find out that the good sex is actually very, very rare. Like honest politician. <laughs> That's why the most common question people ask me is what to do to have a good sex. And every time I reply exactly the same. If I had no the answer, working for everyone, I would probably receive Nobel Peace Prize. The answer actually exists, and I will provide it today. Is it, it is, however, not universal, nor is it simple. But it's definitely worth listening. So uh, let me tell you a story about a couple and their romance. The events took place not so long ago, and not so far away. This story is set in a world where people pair up on the basis of their desires, not the, the will of their parents, where you don't have to get married to have sex with someone. This is Kate and Tom Ward, and this is Kate and Tom Ward, and this is that very evening when, when they met and felt in love. First 80 months of their relationship was a storm of passion. Everything made them happy. After some two years, um, they decided to move in, and you know what? Nothing changed. They were on top of the world, and sex was still delightful. But, as we know, time is waiting for no one. After some two years, three years, they felt the, the flame of passion wakening. They were very content about being together, although they no longer tore their clothes off every time, time uh, they were back home. When their relation reached 36 months, they become cold to each other. Intimacy was no longer on a menu, rather they felt invisible wall, wall between them. They've reached the crossroads, either make changes or break up. This is what Kate thought to herself. It's all his fault. He no longer cares for me. He only cares for sex, like all the others do. The same, in the same time, Tom's thoughts were, she doesn't want to sleep with me, she totally ignores me, always the same, too complicated. Can you guess what happened, what really happened to their relationship? Well, it didn't break down. It just matured. During the first two years of love, our bodies are flooded with the excess of endorphins, oxytocin, dopamine, serotonin. This gives us thrills we call an affection. This brings butterflies in our stomach, pulse elevation when we sense beloved one. But nothing stays forever. And the time of hormonal rehab must come. Some call it the end of love, a disaster, but this is only a matter of perspective. Many people believe that since a couple love each other, they will certainly have a great sex. You know it well, I know. This is what we absorb from all movies and books. This, and they 
live happily ever after. In fact, good sex is more like a la learning a language. Yes, we've all been born with ability for learning it. We all can use at least one. But if we want something more, something sophisticated, we need to develop additional skills. Our couple never thought that love and good sex requires efforts from them. That love and good sex, they thought that love and good sex comes naturally and spontaneously just because the perfect one has been met. This is nothing but a romantic myth. This paint our picture all in black. That's why we need a supernatural force to save our couple. And here comes the sorcerer and she knows what to do. She cast five potent spells on Kate and Tom, and those five spells are going to transform their bodies and their attitude to love, word, sex and love. The first spell was mindfulness. It was even a bit silly for Kate and Tom to just sit still and breathe for 15 minutes every second day. But with the time, mindfulness practice got into their blood. They stopped struggling with the permanent discomfort and emotional anxiety. The quality of their everyday life reached totally new level as their cognitive functions improved. Even focusing on the positive aspects of, uh, of their existence became much easier as they remain more present here and now. One day they had a huge fight. She shouted, he claimed up. Suddenly, when they gaze at each other, they've noticed the irrelevance of their behavior. Kate thought to herself, mm, I was so cruel to him. Nor Tom was proud of his arrogant silence. An intense feeling of compassion came over them and they made love. It was a gentle and thoughtful sexual meeting. None of them wanted to rush. When they were cuddling in the afterglow, Kate said, Tom, when you touch me slowly, I really feel you are in bed with me. The second spell changed a lot. It was a spell of self-awareness. For you, what does it really mean to be self-aware? It means to know who you are. It means also to be free from negative influence of culture, fears, beliefs. For Tom, the main challenge was, as he perceives it, uh, was he orgasms too soon. Sorcerer said to him, you don't run too far if you run out of breath. And he took her advice seriously. First, it, it was a bit odd and totally different than in uh, adult movies he was used to, but he quickly learned a new breathing pattern. One day, Tom had an argument at, at work, and, and he felt an overwhelming sense of anger. He was just about to leave the room and slam the door, but instead, he exhaled deeply. In a second, thoughts in his mind cleared up, emotion went down, and he felt the space within. Tom realized that the breath can be could be his way of staying more, more self-aware, not only in sex. In the same time, Kate was coping with her beliefs and fears about sexuality. She discovered that for the whole life, she wasn't really interested in developing it and knew very little about her desires. It was rather a stone obligation to do something to her. Uh, as she perceives him as a driving force, she expects a lot from him, to guide her, to encourage her. The most unpleasant discovery for her was, even she considered herself a liberal woman, she wasn't really comfortable with her own sexuality. And everything she knew about her womanhood was outdated and unrealistic, had nothing to do with her personal experience. The third spell was all about the time. You remember how Tom earnestly practiced breathing during sex? Of course. One day, one night, he felt all his body during an orgasm and he couldn't stop admiring the amazing feeling. Also, this time they made love twice as long as before. Tom discovered the tempo gusto of sex. Tempo gusto is the most proper pace of doing certain thing. When you're running away from a tiger, the pace is rather swift. But if you want to make love passionately, there is 
no need to hustle so much. They've both noticed that they quicker they do something, be it eating, reading, making love, the fewer, the fewer sensations they experience. A hectic life leaves us numb and indifferent for rapture, to rapture for beauty and pleasure. Kate summarizes it by saying that she doesn't want to spend her life on an autopilot. Establishing an uh, intimate and full of love contact with the body was the essence of the fourth spell. Your body is not a tool in a pleasure pursuit. It's rather a field where your sexuality grows. It is because you cannot set yourself intellectually on feeling pleasure. Pleasure is the state of the body. You either feel within your body that something is delightful or you don't. The difference between thinking about the pleasure and living it through is like between reading about the orgasm and being a part of it. We all, Kate, Tom, me, you, we all are world-class champions in running away from emotional difficulties. When we feel fear, anger, sadness, we tend to disregard them by cutting ourselves from sensation we feel within our bodies. It helps for a moment, but not for a long run. Because disconnecting from those unpleasant states of body means also disconnecting from those desirable ones. Joy, pleasure, ecstasy. Once Kate and Tom understood this mechanism, they gave the proper space to emotional sensation they felt within their bodies. Kate learned how to express tenderness and love she felt for Tom through sex. She learned how to set her body free and lose control. In the same time, Tom was not, no longer escaping towards uh, abstraction during making love, and techniques were no longer his main interests. Slogans in media are telling us that everybody can have a great, wonderful life, that Hollywood-style sex will just happen once you are beautiful enough and you find the perfect match, and we are all get cheated by this. In fact, the down-to-earth perseverance is, is uh, equally as important as chemistry of love. A ritual is this type of work needs to be done if you want to have a good sex. A ritual is an introduction of sacral element into everyday life. Otherwise, if you don't take care of this, all your activities will become a meaningless routine, copying certain gestures. All beautiful things eventually are going to fade away, leaving us burned out and frustrated. Kate and Tom fix dates for their special me meetings for the next half a year. They pick up special places. They took care about scenarios. Sometimes it was a romantic weekend, sometimes a hot kinky night. But every time they took their time with awareness, mindfulness, and their bodies open for pleasure. The fifth spell was about activation of the reward mechanism. Thanks to it, we will remember intensive experiences longer. If we connect positive, stimulating memories with our partner, we raise stronger bonds. By creating their own rituals, Kate and Tom create their own personal narrative. Good sex is not what you think you must be. Good sex is not what you learn from pop culture. Good sex must be self-conscious, as it is an expression of your true self. Kate and Tom said they love free of a romantic illusion. They enriched their sexuality with qualities absent before. Now they are more focused on pleasure than on performance. By the way, they decided to stay together. You think it's a magic? Nothing like that. Better sex connects people better. Thank you.